My name is Peter, and welcome back to SV Silver Heels, my Rhodes 22. Uh, we're going to continue on the topic of uh, projects on the boat here in the spring of 2017. Uh, at the end of the last episode, we had reinstalled uh, <clears throat> the base for the galley cabinets there on the starboard side. And uh, we're going to continue working on the galley. And uh, you might be a little surprised, but the next thing that has to be that has to go in uh, is not the cabinet uh, work it's the it's the countertop and uh, the reason for that is uh, we have to go through some gyrations uh, with the countertop uh, to, to get it into position and those gyrations would not be possible if the, the cabinet was in there it would be in the way uh, not sure <laughs> How well I'm going to be able to film this, but I'll I'll give it a shot. So the countertop is now sitting at its proper height. Uh, but unfortunately, it needs to actually go a little higher than that. Uh, the uh, Underneath, I've added uh, a piece of wood here that um, is a support uh, for the pieces that go in here that support our icebox lid. Uh, so that sticks down an inch. Um, so we need to come up another inch, say inch and a quarter, uh, on this end so that the icebox can be slid underneath it. Uh, but unfortunately, because this end of uh, the galley space, the aft end of the cabin, uh, the the wall slopes inwards. I can't just lift this end by that inch and a quarter. Uh, so I first have to lift the forward end about as far as I can uh, to give us the wiggle room that will then allow us to lift the aft end. Well, there is now enough room uh, to slide the icebox cabinet underneath and then we'll drop the countertop down into place. So here is our icebox carcass under the raised countertop and it's almost in position but not quite. We need to take a closer look at the aft end. So the, the two pieces of wood 
that are holding up the aft end of the countertop are also preventing uh, us from pushing uh, the ice box the last three quarters of an inch aft that it needs to go in order for uh, this piece of wood to fit into the hole uh, that's uh, in the top of the foam piece. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, insert a block of wood in here uh, <coughs> that'll <laughs> excuse me keep the countertop up and then we can pull these two pieces out. By the way, the, the reason there's two pieces of wood holding up the aft end of the countertop is that when I slide them out into this space, uh, there's a limit to how far they can go because they run into the companionway. So uh, they're narrow enough that they'll I can slide them out to here and then pull them out. So now the ice box is all the way aft. It's against the uh, aft wall of the cabin at the top and against an L bracket uh, here at the bottom, or a pair of L brackets. And now we can pull out that block of wood and let the aft end of the countertop go down into the recess that's uh, there for it in the top of the icebox foam construction. So there's that, and now we can uh, drop the forward end down. So there it is, uh, and now we can start screwing everything into place. With the ice chest carcass and countertop now uh, fully attached to the boat in their final positions. Uh, we've brought the upper shelf unit uh, back into the boat, and uh, which means we can start making electrical connections. So I believe that I have made uh, all of the electrical, electrical connections here at the breaker panel area. Uh, and also uh, connections for the um, Namiya multiplexer, which also will talk Wi-Fi to um, my iPad. So I did most of this work with the whole shelf unit uh, pulled out a few inches, which did make uh, it much easier to, uh, to make the various connections. So, uh, we need to close this up, which I can't really do with one hand, and, um, well, I guess we'll connect a battery and try a few circuits. We're having a uh, rare sunny day here today. It's been raining for days and days. Uh, so, I've connected up the battery under the settee, which didn't result in any sparks. Uh... And we'll turn our battery switch to one, which should give us something. And we'll turn our cabin lights on, the breaker, and then the light itself. Hopefully you can see that. All right, we'll try a few more, but uh, so far so good. Flush with our apparent success uh, with the electrical wiring, uh, we're gonna continue on and put the lid for the ice box in. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, run a bead of caulk around uh, all four edges to prevent any uh, loss of cold uh, through that little gap there. All right, so now our outermost trim piece uh, needs to fit into this opening and be screwed in place. And we've got uh, elongated holes for mounting this uh, to the surrounding frame so that we can get it, uh, hopefully, perfectly flush with the surface of the countertop. Well, that seemed to go pretty well. Uh, we next need to install the uh, innermost support piece, uh, which is what the uh, lid actually rests on, so this will be down a little bit below um, 
the top of uh, the trim piece. And, and this will extend down far enough to cover up the foam insulation. So there is our icebox lid. Looks pretty good. So we're going to continue on a roll here and change subjects again and move on to plumbing. Uh, we're going to start with drainage. And you can see everything uh, involved uh, right here in this shot. Uh, to the right is the drain for the icebox. And uh, you can see the uh, drain for the sink and then the through hull uh, <clears throat> and uh, the the two drains the sink and the ice box need to go through the one hole uh, the through hull and the way we're going to accomplish that is this T fitting so it seems this through hull is not really a through hull in the uh, most common sense of the term it is not a a fitting, uh, it appears, it's actually molded into the hull. It uh, appears to be made out of fiberglass. Uh, and it is uh, not a size that will match the ID of any uh, flexible tubing that I could find. Uh, so <clears throat> I scratched my head for quite a bit over this. And uh, I've got an, another fitting here with, with the T that's a standard PVC fitting. It's got the threads for the one inch uh, T connection on it and a, just a um, slip on connection at the other end. And by sanding this a little bit, I got to the point where uh, that would fit on there. And we'll use a little silicone that help seal it and uh, I put a screw hole in there so we're gonna add a screw on the top um, to further try to hold it in place uh, this this whole thing seems to be uh, a little fragile and it would be uh, a bit of work <laughs> to, to uh, have to replace that so we have test fit uh, our uh, one inch tubing for drainage uh, and so our next step is to actually install our uh, T-fitting onto the through hull and to do that we're gonna uh, smear it up with a bit of silicone uh, which probably is strictly speaking not necessary um, and then we'll uh, put in a little set screw on the top uh, just to help hold it in place. So there's our drain plumbing. Uh, for the most part I did not use hose clamps on here because uh, I don't think they're necessary and just make it harder to take things apart. Uh, if events prove me wrong they're easy enough to add later. I did put the one uh, right here under the sink because that fitting seemed a little bit looser. All right, so uh, we have our uh, supply plumbing uh, to worry about now. So the tubing size we have here is a half inch ID, which was uh, driven by the size of the output ports on the foot pump. Now, unfortunately, um, Stan apparently used a smaller diameter hose for his installation, uh, probably three-eighths, uh, and actually I looked and couldn't find a, a half-inch to three-eighths um, reducer uh, <clears throat> for in a barbed fitting. So we're going to just put the uh, end of the half-inch tubing over the three-eighths inch fitting on the uh, faucet. Uh, we'll apply a little silicone and a hose clamp to that and uh, and I'm quite certain it'll be fine. 
So, uh, the hose leading up to the faucet is in place. Uh, well, what about this other hose? That, as you recall, is the input side, but where's the input? And that's going to go over there, and we'll uh, give this a little demo. So here we've got two of our one and a quarter gallon jugs and a little corral I made for them here under the sink area. And that serves as our water source. So we'll take our input hose and feed it down into one of the jugs. And I put a, a line on there so I know it's in far enough to hit the bottom, which I can feel anyway. But, uh, and then we'll pump. And we need to work some air out. And then we have water. So, that's the, uh, the rest of the water system. So there are two jugs here, so that when one runs dry, you can just switch to the other one if you're in the middle of something. Uh, and then um, bring out a, a fresh jug from under the V-berth uh, at a convenient time. So now that the plumbing is in place, uh, we can go ahead and install uh, the rest of the cabinetry, uh, starting with the partition that goes uh, right up in this area uh, just after the sink and forward of the pump. So there's our partition installed. Uh, it's held in with uh, a total of four L brackets and I put in uh, the top drawer and the bottom drawer at this point just to uh, uh, verify that the spacing uh, between the end of the ice box and that partition is correct because the Drawer slides are kind of finicky. Uh, if you don't uh, get that distance right, they'll bind up. Uh, and uh, on the other side, we've uh, put in a hose clamp to uh, hold our water intake hose in place. And uh, so at this point, we can install the two uh, face frame uh, components, one over the icebox area and one here for the sink area. So here we've got our new galley um, mostly installed. Face frames are on and the drawers are all in. Uh, you can see here that the pedal for the uh, foot pump barely extends uh, past the surface of the cabinets um, and so I don't think will be an issue uh, yet the drawer does clear and uh, you may have wondered uh, about the remaining space here uh, behind the cabinet door and that turns out to be a perfect spot for a little trash can. There's still some cubic inches um, not being used in there but I'm eh, not coming up with a use for them at the moment. So I think that will, uh, that's, that's enough <laughs> for one movie. Um, so we'll wrap this up. We're, we're, we're certainly not done with projects. Uh, there's more of the cabin put to put back together uh, and other stuff we have in mind. Uh, we do plan to eventually put the boat in the water and go sailing, I promise you. So thanks for watching and see you next time.